reduce stress in any given moment is really essential for you to know because if you wait until the end of the day, if you wait until you go to the gym to reduce your stress, you have a full day of stress that have totally accumulated throughout the day and just going to the gym for an hour or so, it's not gonna do it. So here are the coping methods that you can do anywhere and anytime. And the first one, which is the number one most research and scientifically supported coping method to reduce stress is breathing. Now, I know you're breathing now, because if not, there'd be a problem. But it's how we breathe. Nowadays, we're told, hold your core in, suck your tummy in, look, look thin, look svelte, right? But that's actually what that does is that cuts off about half of our diaphragm. So we don't exhale enough carbon dioxide, which we keep some then in our lungs, which then that means we can't inhale all the oxygen that we need. So we really need to, at some point, just let your belly hang out. No one's looking. Let your belly hang out and in through the nose for a count of five. And out for a count of 10. And at the end, you really should be put, have, needing to push the air out. And then when you inhale, let that belly grow and Take in all the oxygen that you can. Another one that we need to talk about is positive affirmations. Now positive affirmations can be done without anybody even noticing. And this is where you're just gonna tell yourself something happy, a joke. You're gonna give yourself a little, yes you can. You're so good at this, you got this, right? Even if you're a little corny, it's still anything that you say to yourself that is very positive. Oh, you are the best mom, you are the best father your children could ever have. Your patients are so lucky to have you as their dentist because you are so caring and highly skilled and trained. So saying a positive affirmation in any given moment is actually gonna re release some oxytocin, and that's what we want. Because when our stress response is triggered, we have all, uh, 112 different stress hormones, including cortisol and epinephrine and norepinephrine, and these, these hormones are flooding our bloodstream, and they have physiological and physical consequences. Um, Another coping method for in the moment, besides breathing and besides um, saying a positive affirmation, is giving or getting hugs. And if that is frowned upon in the establishment in which you are at, do handshakes. Any kind of physical touch, whether pat on the back or a nice big hug or a, a real nice calming handshake from somebody. Actually, again, that releases that cuddle hormone, that oxytocin, that it's like Pac-Man, wonka, 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 wonka. It goes around and eats up the cortisol, right? And that's what we need. We need that cortisol to, to be thinned out from our bloodstreams. So a hug, a handshake, you know, ask, just tell someone, I need a hug right now. You don't have to tell them why. Or just go up and rub elbows with somebody and just say, hey, I'm having kind of a, a yucky day. I'm having a yucky moment. You mind giving me a fist bump? That, in any given moment, is gonna help you reduce your stress. Another thing that you can do in any given moment, now, I, this is a caveat, don't do it, of course, unless you're gonna be safe in the environment in which you're in, but simply closing your eyes. Don't do it while you're driving. Uh, but simply closing your eyes for just a few seconds because you want to cut your brain off to more senses. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll close my eyes and I'll put my hands over my ears. And what it does is that quiets the brain. It, it actually turns off the brain neurons from functioning in those areas and so it gives them a moment to relax. So close your eyes 
shut off your ears just for a few seconds and I promise your stress will be less. Now the last one we're going to talk about is drinking water. How many of you have noticed that I've been just taking little sips of water throughout this video? Probably not, not all of you. Some of you might be wondering, wow, she's really thirsty. But really, were you judging me? Were you looking down on me? Were you thinking I was unprofessional because I needed a drink of water? Absolutely not. So why is it that in so many offices I go to, or in so many managers and leaders that I talk to, say that they restrict water from their employees? They can't have it at the front. They can't have it um, in patient's view. They have to walk to the back. Hydration is essential for proper brain function and to reduce your stress.